It's Don't waiver wire this. day. We're going to somehow here. recap the Monday Night Football doubleheader. We got back to the futures. Let's jump into the wide receivers right off the top here as the notable buys is where we have to start. Yes, folks, it is the first bye week time of the season. A.J. Brown, who's been out anyway, he could use the bye. Monroe St. Brown, Devontae Smith, Jamison Williams, who had the massive play last night. Dallas Goddard, Lad McConkey, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, and Sam Laporta. Basically the Lions offense in this, Matthew, is the, the one that really jumps out. Yeah, uh, uh, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, but a lot of big name wide receivers, plus the, the Eagles guys that you've had to w be without for a couple of weeks and now uh, another week without them. And so uh, where we're going to start, though, um, and I guess, you know, if you're using a Titans wide receiver, probably not. Uh, OK, so uh, I would Dontavian Wicks is somebody that I think is 86% uh, available. Yeah, which is surprising. Week four, 80% route participation, 24% target share. Looks like it's a high ankle sprain for Christian Watson. Down Tavian Wicks, the question was never about his talent. It was always about could he get on the field because they have four wide receivers. They're going to go three wide now uh, as well, and Wicks will be on the outside with Jaden Reed in the inside, Romeo Dobbs on the other side. Uh, he, there were six end zone targets against the Vikings, right? Dontavian Wicks caught four of them. He's second among the Green Bay wide receivers in yards per target last season. This is somebody who earns target at a very high rate as well. Jordan Love is back. He's healthy. And look at this upcoming schedule at the Rams, home to Arizona, home to Houston, at Jacksonville. Not a secondary out there that scares you for a good wide receiver, a, uh, a good offense as well. Uh, Dontavian Wicks is a priority on the waiver wire because I think there is a decent chance uh, he does not give this job up once he because Watson's probably missing three to four games if not more and poor guys struggled with injuries throughout um, Wicks is super talented Connor yeah he really is and you have to love this offense with Jordan Love back under center I mean they could push the ball deep they're effective throwing the ball in the red area as well. I mean, Jay, not all this, the game script's not going to be always what it was against Minnesota, but when this team wants to crank up the pass, they're highly effective at it. Yeah, look, this one's just simple. Anyone who ever gets 13 targets from Jordan Love in a game of football has to be rusted in every league. Like, that's it. You know, the analysis beyond that is just kind of semantics. Yeah, and by the way, it's not just on Tavian Wicks, but Romeo Dobbs, again, Christian Watson out, so Dobbs suddenly, who's 60% available in Yahoo leagues. Like, uh, this is somebody who Jordan Love looked, in, looked to towards the end zone Last year in a big way, he was top six among all wide receivers in terms of end zone targets. Uh, he leads Green Bay, actually. Romeo Dobbs re leads the Packers wide receivers in routes run this season. Uh, in the two games that he's played with Jordan Love, he has almost an 18% target share. I prefer Wicks to Dobbs. Uh, but again, if you're looking for wide receivers and at the end of the segment, we'll show you sort of how I rank all the wide receivers that are out there. But Dobbs is somebody that should be on your radar as well. Worth noting that only one team in the NFL has given up more touchdowns to opposing wide receivers than the L.A. Rams, the Packers, who they play this week. We also got Xavier Leggett on the list here, guys. 86% available for the first round rookie on the Panthers. Their upcoming schedule, the Bears, the Falcons, Commanders and Broncos. And when Adam Thielen went down, Matthew, we talked about Leggett is going to have to step up. You love to see 10 targets. He gets the touchdown. He also got the ball uh, two carries in this game. He's just a unique weapon more so than just a wide receiver. Yeah, and that's what I would ask uh, ask you, Connor, yeah. in terms of people that may not have watched all of Xavier Leggett's tape from South Carolina the way you did. What do the Panthers have? What do, what do fantasy managers need to know about 17 on the Panthers? He's big. He's fast. He was a five-year player for that program that really carved out a role on special teams before he became the entire offense, his final year in college. He stuck it out there, and then they used him on drag routes, screens, go balls, jump balls, really get the ball in Xavier Leggett's hands and ask the questions later. And it feels like that's why the Panthers moved up in the first round to get him because they don't have a guy that could do that in this offense. I don't look at Mingo as that, although the previous regime did. So him and Deontay Johnson complement each other extremely well. To your point, 35% of his routes were from the slot, 40% of the perimeter. So as a rookie, they're already moving him all over the field. His average depth of target was over nine yards, so they're targeting him deep down the field as well. 88% route participation, which tells me he's got the full playbook. I mean, if he's out there on 88% of the routes, it tells me, and again, they're moving him in the slot and the outside. They're using him in what is suddenly a very competent offense under Andy Dalton. Yep, I think a very defined one as well in terms of the receivers where it's Deontay uh, and Xavier Leggett and then Jonathan Mingo is kind of operating in the slot, less of a target there. And then Tommy Tremble's playing tight end, but Le Le Xavier Leggett, if he's gonna play, he played more snaps than Deontay Johnson. Like he played yeah. 61 snaps. So uh, with Dalton playing the way he is, he has to be rostered. Yeah. Giants, uh, Wondell Robinson, 74% available target monster. Wow. 
right now. Jay, on your Giants, I mean, we know what the work Malik Neighbors is going to get, but they're looking to Wandell Robinson on all the short area targets. Yeah, definitely. And this also is a very seemingly defined offense where it's Wandell Robinson and Malik Neighbors in the passing game. Malik Neighbors can't continue to endure this kind of work. He's going to get really It kind of got up. a little bit, yeah. uh, it was a little bit uncomfortable towards the end of the Cowboys game where it felt like he was just getting rocked on every single play. He gets the concussion. It seems like he'll be okay to play this coming week, but still, Wandell Robinson, uh, you know, I said that anyone who gets 13 targets from Jordan Love has to be rostered. Yeah, you get 14 targets from Daniel Jones. You probably still have to be rostered even if it's not as exciting. 74% available. He's basically a PPR cheat code. So far, he's through four weeks, he's a top 30 wide receiver in PPR. He's scored at least 11 fantasy points in three out of his four games this year. They are likely going to be down in games and they're throwing. Daniel Jones is going to be under pressure. And when he's looking, when he's under pressure, you know, they're dumping it off to Wandell Robinson, who is a talented kid. He was a second round pick. Um, who's he struggled with injuries, but feels like taking forever, and it drives me crazy because I had him in Dynasty and I bailed on him because you know whatever. Um, for Xavier Leggett, actually, uh, but still, uh, Wando Robinson is kind of kind of legit. I feel like yeah, especially if you're in PPR. I mean, he's yeah. going to get the ball. He's going to get the ball a lot, and Brian Dable is drawing up a lot of looks towards him. Josh Downs next on our list against Jacksonville secondary, which has just been dreadful, especially with uh, Tyson Campbell on IR. 79% available. Matthew, there's a chance Josh Downs is the best receiver on this team. And I know that sounds crazy, but I really believe that. Yeah, look, he, he had a 32% target share in week number four. It's a nice matchup with Jacksonville as well, who are top seven in the NFL in terms of most yards allowed to slot receivers, which is obviously where Downs lines up the most. Uh, but... You know, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. Like, I, honestly, I think you're rooting for comeback player of the year, Joe Flacco, uh, potential comeback player of the year this year as well, Joe Flacco. Next year uh, too, be, maybe. be amazing if he, he won it back-to-back -back years, Jay. That'd be <laughs> unbelievable, hey, honestly, when you think about that. Um, uh, yeah, you know, um, <laughs> you know who's not comeback player of the year is Tyler Lockett. Uh, but what I will say about Josh Downs here is that, again, you'd feel better about this passing offense with – Flacco under center than you would with Richardson. But either way, Downs, who came on late, uh, last year, was kind of a revelation. He started the year hurt, but feels like, you know, uh, as teams are focusing on Michael Pittman, Josh Downs continues to, uh, to take, to continues to get work. You know what I mean? Like, and so, again, I feel better about him if Flacco's starting than Richardson, but I do think Downs should be rostered in more leagues than the, uh, than, than the 30% he's available in. I'm sorry. He's only, he's only rostered in 21% of leagues. Yep. So, he needs to be in, in more. 91 PFF grade last week for Josh Downs, which is beyond elite. And he played 85% of the snaps in the slot, which is exactly what you want. Yeah, uh, that's, what that he's, that's what Connor's saying. That, like, yeah. you know, on a pure talent basis, might be Josh Downs. He's yeah. by far and away their best separator and one of the best separators in the slot in the NFL. He just needs to be healthy. We've been yeah. waiting for this. Yes. So, our, our next one here, Mike Williams on the Jets. He's getting more healthy. He's getting more involved. He's available in 79% of leagues. We saw Minnesota in a complete shootout last weekend, Jay, in the second half. They were running away with it, and then it kind of fell apart. Feels like as Garrett Wilson has some struggles, Brees Hall has some struggles, Aaron Rodgers is going to look Mike Williams' way. Yeah, I think so. He just looks healthier as well. His stats could look better than they do. He dropped that touchdown against the Patriots, which I think would make everything look a lot cleaner. And look, the Jets now, they're th almost three-point underdogs against Minnesota at uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So you expect that they may need to be throwing. Uh, and just with the way that Garrett Wilson has just been taken out of games, Rodgers has to look elsewhere. And elsewhere right now is Mike Williams and Al Lazard. The question with Mike Williams has never been talent. It's always been health. He's healthy now. His snaps have increased every single week. So I'm with you there, Connor, as the Jets are continuing to look for answers. Maybe one of the answers is big Mike Williams. Some deeper league targets at wide receiver. Trey Tucker on the Raiders. Jordan Whittington and Tutu Atwell on the Rams. We've talked about them a lot. Ray Ray McLeod, who continues to be involved in the Falcons offense while Kyle Pitts is not. And maybe it's Jalen Polk time for the Patriots offense that is just looking for answers, Matthew. Trey Tucker is somebody that Denny Carter talked about last week as well. Uh, had a nice game there. I've, I've said this as soon as Cooper Cup went down, Jordan Whittington is going to be a thing. Last week, over almost a 28% target share, the second highest by a Rams wide receiver this season. Not in that game, but this season. He's going to continue to play in the slot in that Cooper Cup role as well. And for whatever it's worth, when we, meaning NBC, had the Chiefs-Falcons game, Tony Dungy, Rodney Harrison, Jack Collinsworth, they go to the games every week. Uh, Tony Dungy actually spoke with Kirk Cousins and told me, uh, Tony was texting me, he says, like, Kirk Cousins was like, 
I really like Ray Ray McLeod, like actively brought him his name up to Coach Dungy when they were out in the field together. So just, you know, and by the way, the numbers have supported that. Like he's been looking for Ray Ray McLeod. To recap, Matthews week five top wide receiver waiver targets. Dontavian Wicks is number one, 86% available. He's got the Rams. Xavier Leggett at two. Romeo Dobbs staying in that Packers wide receiver room at number three. Wondell Robinson having a breakout year for the Giants. Josh Downs healthy and looking good in his return. Mike Williams, same for him as he gets more healthy. He gets better week after week. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.